morning, everyone. Um, hi, my name is Joost. I run the product management team at Effect Photonics. We are a European-based company that builds optical transceivers based on photonic integration and DSP, so digital signal processors. And today I want to talk a little bit about coherent optics and how they can help scale artificial intelligence networks in a sustainable way. So this slide, I think uh, we've seen variations of this slide around the conference uh, over the last few days. Uh, still, I think it's, it's important to, to have a quick look at it, uh, just to understand the context of the, the problem we're trying to solve. So basically, in the last 40-ish years, um, compute has doubled every two years, right? So that was Moore's law, but, uh, and that was enough to satisfy the, um, uh, the requirements that were, were there in that time. But as you can see, since 2010-ish, um, since the, the introduction of, the, of, the, of, the, of AIML, that is no longer enough because you can see here that the doubling is actually every set, six and a half or 7.7 .7 months. And for the um, large language models, it's roughly the same as for the deep learning era, but it's a factor of two or three higher still uh, in terms of uh, com training compute that's needed as the previous speakers also talked about. So there is already an issue that electronics cannot fully keep up with uh, the demand that's out there, as we've talked about over the last few days. In some sense, you could say, OK, that's fine. We don't really care because we can just parallelize, right? So we talked about the disaggregation in one of the previous talks also. And, and to a certain extent, we can, right? So we can just put more CPUs, put more GPUs, and just uh, keep up with the increase in demand in that way. And I'm sure most of you uh, saw NVIDIA's uh, GTC a couple of weeks back, and that's sort of exactly what they're doing, right? Um, so they're just putting more and more GPUs in one rack, now scaling up to 72 uh, GPUs per rack, connecting everything in the rack with copper, um, as much as they can, they even, even said, right, we want to connect as much as possible with copper because just the cheapest and most power efficient solution out there. But at some point, you also have to connect these racks together and you also have to connect, uh, let's say, blocks of rack racks together. And for that, you need uh, a couple of levels of switching and these switches will be optical. As, as it was already mentioned also by the previous speaker, um, electronic cables will only get you so far. So once the distance increases, you're going to need to switch to optical to, to bridge that gap. Um, now, if we do that with present day optical transceivers, we create two problems, actually three problems. I'll touch on the third one on the next slide. But one of the problems is cost, and one of the problems is power, right? So if you were to just take the next generation network, plug in current generation optics, um, Whereas in normal data centers, optics, the cost of optics is almost negligible. If you go to these, uh, these clusters that NVIDIA is proposing, this cost will actually be very significant if you compare it to the cost of the rest of the system. So these two graphs, both of them actually also came from NVIDIA who are saying we are creating an optical bottleneck. Okay, cost, you could say one thing is one thing. Um, if these AI applications are actually so uh, lucrative, we don't really care. So that's not really a fundamental problem. It's more of a business model problem, but still important. A more fundamental problem is the power problem, right? So we've been talking for the last days also about submersion cooling, or how do we get all the heat out of these uh, data centers? And then if optics, who are now really, again, in a traditional hyperscaler data center, are a fraction of the power. In AI clusters, if we do it like this, they're going to be a huge part of the power consumption, and that all has to be cooled away. So that's a problem. Uh, and then the question is, how can we address that? And I think there are many technologies that come together to address that. But one of the ones I want to talk about today is how coherent uh, technology can help address part of this problem. So. Coherent optical communication has been around for a very long time, uh, mostly used in, in core networks, and it's been used there for, for decades. And uh, <coughs> as you can see here, uh, it started off with long haul networks. If you want to move, ah, just because it's recorded. Sure. If, if you, uh, um, in long haul networks, it's been used uh, 
uh, for a long time, so really thousands of kilometer subsea networks. Those are very, very big boxes, um, and they con contain these coherent uh, uh, transmission units. Over time, we've seen that as data rates go up, coherent transmission is also being used on shorter and shorter link lengths. For instance, in metro and regional um, areas, and lately we've been seeing actually two trends in parallel. Data rates go up, and um, the size of coherent boxes go down. Right? So we're seeing that where it used to be a huge server rack, then a pizza box, box, it's now a pluggable, right? So especially the 400 GZR, I think, was a turning point in the industry where data center interconnect nowadays completely transitioned to coherent optical pluggables. So we're seeing, and that's distances of about 80 to 120 kilometers. So we're seeing coherent push uh, closer and closer to the data center. And what I'm, I'm here to talk to you about today is that actually we believe coherent will push inside the data center even, so even trans, uh, transgress that border, because as speeds go up, um, there's a lot of issues that you have to overcome uh, and direct detect, which is sort of the, the opposite technology to coherent, will not get you there. Um, yeah, one of the things I didn't mention here, so why use coherent technologies? It's proven, and it basically gives you a 4x data rate increase because you're not just using the amplitude, but also the phase and the polarization to encode data. Um, however, if you just do it in a traditional way, <coughs> you will still have uh, uh, cost issues and power issues, so we need to change that a little bit. Um, one of the things about the cost is if you just take present day coherent optics or any kind of optics and just parallelize them, uh, you don't drive down the dollars per bit because you just multiply. And you create a third problem, which is a reliability concern, right? So you can imagine if you have one pluggable with a 99% uh, reliability, if you put two in parallel, your system now has 98% reliability, right? And this scales exponentially also, so that's, that's not a good idea. Instead, uh, you could use faster optics, coherent optics, um, to, go, to go faster. Um, but you need to think about how to design these coherent optics in order to make sure that your costs don't uh, explode. And that's what, what one of the things that our company has been looking into. Um, and that's code packaging. So we have a specific focus, and multiple people talked about this already here, uh, on photonic integration. Uh, we use indium phosphide to integrate all of the optical elements in a single chip, modulators, lasers, photodiodes, everything and then co-package that with a DSP. So put the DSP and the optics very close together and package that in a standardized microelectronics manufacturing packaging process. That is very high volume and very low cost. And the advantage of putting it so close together is that you can share real estate. So you can have shared voltage lines, shared filters, stuff like that. And also a simpler design because you don't have so much RF restrictions because you're so close together and your losses are very low. So if you think about how to design a coherent transceiver from the bottom up, um, you can do that in a very low cost way. So that's one of the issues. And the other issue was the, the power. Um, and if we think about power, I always like this picture a lot uh, from Google. Cedric Lam often shows this picture also at OFC. It's like, um, Optics don't even scale with Moore's law, right? So we have Moore's law not keeping up with AI, but optics doesn't even scale as fast as that. And you can really see that here, that as data rates go up, traditional short reach, and, and that's 100 meters, and long reach, that's 10 kilometers, they, they don't get any more energy efficient. So the optics uh, don't get any better. But if you combine optics with DSPs, with coherent DSPs, you can actually drive down that, that energy curve, and that's what, what we're trying to do. Of course, we get a lot of pushback also on that, um, and then because people are saying, hey, but Coherent is so power hungry, right? These, these 400 GZRs that like 25 watts, never gonna work in a data center, I agree. Um, but they need to be designed for data center specific applications, right? So you need to take into account O band, so no uh, dispersion compensation algorithms, you need to think about low latency facts, stuff like that, so specifically design. All right. 
Call to action. Um, I think uh, we need to solve this w uh, problem in a sustainable way. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. There are technologies out there that have been used for decades and can be used again. So let's join forces on that. I know there's a, a working group already looking into this and we have a lot of resources also on the website. By the way, if you don't want to take pictures, you can download the slides here later. Thank you very much. We have a couple of minutes. Anyone have any questions? A nice presentation, yours. The question, uh, as you know, today in the, in the telecom world, the major issue is interoperability because there are uh, different uh, DSP manufacturers with proprietary. Then how do you see moving to data center? Because DSP would be the key element. Yeah. Yeah, so standardization is going to be key indeed. And, and I think the, the, uh, the OIF and the IEEE, but I think mostly OIF working groups are doing a great job. You saw it in... I think the success enabler of 4 GZR is the interoperability, and that's you can use any vendors. I think there's now 16 vendors out there with, with pluggables, 4 GZR pluggables, and anything we do inside the data centers is going to have to have the same uh, level of interoperability as well. So standardization from the industry. Yeah. 